Hello YouTubers, it is of course I Trollface the Man, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be taking several different lights, like this incandescent light, this LED light, other LED light, and the CFL bulb, and find out what happens when we use them in a socket that is already ballasted. So, um, that's usually meant to run fluorescent lights like we have this fluorescent tube here. So in a different video, I'm going to be restoring and repairing this uh, light here that I have, light extension cord combo, that was just sitting out in the trash. And it seemed like it still had its uses. At first, this bulb wasn't working, but then spontaneously started working. However, there's other problems we'll get to in a minute. But the thing that's interesting about this is because it has this fluorescent tube in here um, that is not ballasted itself. So these have a ballast in the base of them. But these ones do not, so they act more like those long tube lights with a separate ballast. Um, if I remove this light, there will still be a ballast in its path. And you can get some interesting adapters that will adapt this type of base to a standard bulb socket base like this. Meaning we can try and run these off of a ballast which probably isn't gonna work well, but I actually have heard of people using these when they have fixtures that support this type of base to adapt them over and then stick regular lights in them. Uh, I have a feeling that some of them might work, but there's other complications of that uh, we'll get into in a minute. Anyways though, this right here, I'm going to be restoring it in another video as I mentioned and also bypassing the ballast to make it good for running these other lights because it's just, it's inefficient. It's, and I can get so much more out of LED. And though it's very true that I could just stick with this light right now, the problem is, is that this light is very, very wobbly. It's come loose from the base here and I'm just gonna do away with it. So I'm gonna turn off the power here. I'm gonna go ahead and carefully try and remove the base here, which is easier said than done. Here we go. You can see we have our adapter here, though it turns out there's a couple of different versions of this base. However, this one seems kind of universal for which one it can use. Very simple though, it's just a, a neutral and a live, um, just the same as most sockets. Now there is one consideration. If a socket is wired up properly, then this center right here should always be the live and this outside should be the neutral. And that's very important because it means that if a bulb is only partially screwed in and the metal on the side of it is exposed, if you touch it, you're not touching a live bulb. You're touching um, something that is neutral. Um, however, because there is no dictation for polarity it means you can plug it in either way which means that either this outside could be live and the inside neutral or the inside could be uh, live and the outside neutral however they do a good job with this adapter which i will link below if you're interested in it having a higher uh, plastic on the outside to make sure when the bulb's fully screwed in you can't touch the side and potentially get electrocuted but yeah basic concept of this is and i can actually see that the neutral wire goes on this side so I'm going to line up, I can tell that this is the outer pin, I'm going to line those up properly, so just for safety, it'll work either way. But um, let's see what happens. I'm also going to wear goggles, I don't think anything's going to go too catastrophically wrong, but maybe. I'm going to stop right here really quick and say ballast can depend on a lot of different things and can be as simple as an inductor, resistor, or transformer, or can be very complicated. Stepping voltages up and down with transformers or limiting current electronically with pulses and have quick starting mechanisms, which means they can vary wildly in design. And I realized that my test here only test one type, which I found out to be a basic inductor based ballast with no special other parts to it or quick start mechanisms. Again, this is an unballasted tube, so it requires a little transformer and sometimes other circuitry uh, in there in order to run, unlike this one, which has a ballast built in. Uh, the way that these tubes work, which is going to be significant why that this might still be able to run other lights, is they actually do have a filament in them, almost like an incandescent light. 
um, and that filament heats up which then heats up the mercury vapor inside of here and allows it to become conductive and allows electricity to go through here. So initially it will put out a certain amount of uh, lower voltage power before going ahead and discharging through the tube which maybe some lights can run on. They do have lights that are like LED lights that are designed to run with or without a ballast, but usually those are for long fixtures, and these types of lights don't have that problem to worry about, usually. Um, what should we start with? I have this incandescent light here. It's just a basic filament. So if I plug it into the extension cord here, lights up just fine. Now, let's go ahead and plug it into this ballasted fixture. I can feel it vibrating, I can feel it humming. And I'll try and get you a good view. Uh, it's not, it's glowing, not very bright. And what's interesting is that the filament seems to be vibrating. Presumably, some from motion and some from uh, possibly the oscillation of the power or even the humming of the transformer here. But yeah, it's working, it's just not working very bright. And that's because it only needs a little bit of power to initially get the filaments to heat up, to heat up the gas inside of this tube and allow for the power to start going through the gas once it becomes conductive. So there's not a whole lot of power that's needed to light the filament. But because there is that power there, perhaps it might go ahead and um, work with some of these other bulbs. I have a clear bulb now because I figure that'll be a little bit easier to see what's going on. And actually, this one does light. It's not anywhere near as bright as it should be, but it gives off at least enough usable light that somebody might consider this uh, acceptable if they end up doing some type of retrofitting um, using this adapter and they just run it straight off the ballast. Okay, well... For comparison, this is how the light actually should look. Much brighter. Probably about at least four to five times as bright. What next should we try? I know. Let's go ahead and try the fluorescent light, which again already has a ballast in here. So we're running a ballast into another ballast. I, I don't think it's going to work well. Oh, and of course, let's first see what it looks like when it's plugged in normally. CFL bulb, runs fine, looks good. Now running it through another ballast. Oh, well that is a very interesting result. So this CFL, with its own built-in ballast in the base, works fine having another ballast uh, powering it at least outwardly, presumably, for short term. Uh, we don't actually know what the effects would be uh, for long term if we went ahead and just ran it off this ballast. It could cause the light to, to fail prematurely, but it looks almost as bright as it would be when I had it plugged in the other thing, which is quite fascinating, to be perfectly honest. What about a chip LED? So this is a non-dimmable chip LED. And as you can see, works fine. It's fairly bright, 60 watts. Let's try it with the ballast now. And it works. And you know, this isn't super surprising necessarily because at least to my understanding, most of these ballasts are uh, current limited. Meaning that um, if you're trying to draw too much current through like an incandescent filament, the voltage will drop a lot, uh, meaning that they act like a low voltage. But if you're using something that doesn't actually require much filament, like an LED um, like this, or possibly even the CFL as it seems, the voltage might actually stay relatively um, about where it should be for when it comes out of wall power. So that, that seems to work with the LED light. Again, we can't say about the longevity of it. And let's try this LED not light. Now this one is dimmable and it seems to run at 
full brightness too, the brightness that I would expect it to go ahead and run. Now there's many different types of ballast, uh, including electronic ballast, and they might behave differently and, and do different things. There's also quick start ballast and, and such. What I'm assuming is happening right now is that there's, there's just enough power that's going through the ballast that's meant to run this initial filament that is going ahead and having no issues with running these lights. Um, again though, the issue with this is that over time, because these ballasts can put out a uh, ballast can put out a higher voltage, that higher voltage, if it does trigger, might destroy the circuitry inside of whatever you're using. So can you use these while leaving a ballast in place? Sure. It's just not ideal. And then the other thing is too, is that you're going to be wasting significantly more power running it with the ballast if you're using an, a bulb that doesn't need a ballast just because of the inherent losses of the ballast. And I actually found like, um, I had a couple of of lights in my basement that were the long tube lights and I had replaced the fluorescent tubes that were in there with um, LEDs. Except for these LEDs could run ballasted or non-ballasted so I left the ballast in initially and I, I ran them like that. However later on I decided to bypass the ballast or remove the ballast that way those light fixtures just ran off of the straight 120 volts and not going through a ballast and what I had found is not only did the lights run about like 10 to 15 percent brighter but they also consumed god I don't even know I think it was about like 30 percent less power I'll have to look back and reference it but uh, these ballasts can be extremely wasteful. Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting, uh, informational, and uh, maybe it'll give you some information that you could really use. And again, in another video, I'm going to be restoring this. I'm going to be doing a ballast bypass. I will link that in the description below um, and also probably put a card in the corner that you can go ahead and click on if you want to see that video. Thank you very much to my awesome patrons who support helps well, support the channel and help me make new videos. Uh, even if I might not make much off of YouTube advertising revenue, that is definitely a nice, a nice helpful thing for buying supplies and everything. And I thank you guys very much again and bye.